Hey everybody, we're going through the final achieve question for this year anyway, for the 3.14 probability distributions exam. We've got all the achieve questions for the 2023 exam to look through in this video. Um, so let's get started. So we've got question number 14. Um, there are many sheep farms in New Zealand where the animals um, are grazing all year round. The rating stock is defined as the number of animals per graze. For sheep being farmed in New Zealand hills, the average stock rates is nine sheep per hectare. So per hectare is really nice. That's the giveaway of a percent distribution. Using a suitable probability distribution, estimate the probability that there are more than 10 in a given hectare. Um, specifically, it says to name, state and name the parameters for your probability distribution. So um, the distribution we're using here, as we said, is percent distribution. Because it's asked for extra stuff, let's just state what we're doing as we're doing it. So the pro percent distribution is what we're looking at. Um, and we're going to draw a number line 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have to go quite a bit because it's asked us for more than 10. So it means we've got to get to 10 and then plus a few extra um, to see it. So we've got 11, 12, and let's stop at 13 here. There we go. So that's our number line. We now need to figure out what exactly are we calculating. So more than 10. So that doesn't include 10, I don't think. So that's going to be 11 onwards. Um, these questions here are quite tricky. They come up quite a bit in your exams, though. But the issue we have here is percent distributions work from left to right. So it starts at 0. We can't randomly just pick up at 11 and go forwards. So we've got to start at 0 to do this. So... That means we need to find the probability of this group here. We're going to 1 minus the prob that probability, and that's going to get me to the probability of the 11 onwards group up the top there. So let's start off with that um, the bigger group first. So the probability that x is being um, less 10 or less, um, i.e. this first group, that's going to be equal to, and this is when we're going to need to state our parameters. So we know here that our x value is going to be equal to 10. Our lambda is going to be equal to 9. Uh, remember, 10 was the highest value in the question, and the 9 was given to us in the question. Um, if you put that in the percent cumulative distribution mode on your graphics calculator, um, well, I got 0 0.7060, and that there had a 4 dp rounding. I can now do the 1 minus part to then get the big probability. So the probability that x is more than 10 is going to be equal to 1 minus that probability, 0 0.7060. And that's going to give me 0 0.2940. And again, that was a 4 dp rounding carrying on from above. So hopefully that question made sense. Bit of a, you know, a lot of working for an achieve mark, but I don't think there were anything particularly messy or complicated in that one. A pretty standard percent distribution question. Hey, we are now on to question 15, and I have got an extract from the formula sheet, so it kind of gives the question away, uh, but I just wanted to have that available for us to read. So we've got some more sheep-related questions. Um, suppose a uniform distribution is chosen, find the probability that a random sheep is greater than 35 microns. So microns is the wool um, fineness that they're measuring over here. So I guess the first thing to note is, well, we just got to sketch our rectangular distribution. And from our graph, we know the minimum is going to be 20 and our maximum is going to be 60. So that there is 20 over here and that there is 60. Um, just a reminder, that's our A value because it's our minimum. That's our B value because that's our, our maximum. The questions ask us for greater than 35. So I'm going to draw a random line just kind of below the halfway point. Um, so we've been trying to find, you know, the area of this chunk here. So 35, that's the X value that I'm interested in. Um, so the, the this is just a rectangle, or specifically this chunk here is a rectangle. We're going to do base, which along here we could probably figure out the base by subtracting these two numbers but we don't have the height and that's where the formula sheet comes in because that tells us about the height of the rectangle when a is when x is between a and b so our height is going to be equal to 1 over b minus a which is 1 minus or 1 over so it's going to be 60 minus that 35 
So we've got 60 minus 35. Oh, no, no, sorry. It's it's um, 60 over 20, isn't it? Because it's A minus B, not A minus B minus X. There we go. So we've got um, 60. So it's going to be 40 in total, isn't it? So that means the height of this is going to be 1 over 40. Okay, we now need to figure out the probability of the actual area. So the probability is just going to be base times height because it's a rectangle. So the probability that x is going to be greater than 35, as I said, is equal to base times height. The base of the rectangle is the um, 60 minus 35 I mentioned before. So it's going to be 60 minus 35. And we're going to times it by the height, which is the 1 40th that we calculated above. This here is going to become 25 over 40. And if you simplify that a little bit further, that's going to get to 8 over 5. We are now on to question number 16. All the pens glitching out there, a few different colors popping up randomly. Um, you know, question 16, which is the last achieved question from the 2023 question. Let's get into it. Um, so the rate at which the a hen lays eggs can be modeled by a Poisson distribution. Um, and 99.73 of the time, they're going to lay at least one egg each week. Over a period of time, they lay 10 eggs. Um, each egg independently does or does not hatch. So key thing, does or does not, even though we've got percent distribution up here, this kind of sounds like two outcomes, which is maybe a hint of a binomial distribution instead of a percent distribution. So that might have been a bit of a red herring there to confuse us. Calculate the probability that nine or more of the 10 eggs will hatch. And note of 10 eggs, um, that's actually a fixed number of trials, isn't it? number of trials so that's maybe another really good sign that it's actually a binomial distribution question so let's start by stating that so we're going to use um, binomial distributions to solve this specifically in the calculator we're going to be wanting to use the bcd mode because we've got to add up the 0 1 2 3 and so on all the way up to 8 um, to do that so let's draw my number line just to visualize it a bit better so we've got 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 there's my number line we're trying to find this probability here right nine or more um, but again usual deal for me these distributions only work from left to right starting at zero so i can't just jump all the way to nine and figure out nine and ten so what i'm going to do is i'm going to find this probability and I'm going to do my one minus probability trick to get me to the probability I'm actually looking for. So let's start off with that. So the probability that x is um, less than or equal to 8. So we've got less than or equal to 8. Um, that's going to be equal to, and we need to calculate this on our calculator. We have a few different things, but we know x is equal to 8 because that's the highest number in the group. I know n is equal to 10 because I've got a fixed number of trials being the 10 eggs that are all hatching independently. And I know the probability of each egg hatching is 0 0.65. So you plug that into your BCD mode on your graphics calculator, you're going to get 0 0.9140, and that had a 4DP rounding. Now that I've got this bottom group, I can then work for this um, 9 to 10 group up the top by using the 1 minus trick. So based on that, the probability that X is 9 or more, that's going to be called a 1 minus my 8 or less probability from before. Um, and that gets me to 0 0.0860. And that was still affected by that 4DP rounding earlier. So that question, a bit tricky. There's the, the red herring of calling it a basalt distribution certainly was a bit annoying. Um, but we got there again just by thinking of the assumptions and the inputs of our uh, binomial distribution as we're reading through that question. So last achieved question for the distributions exam. I'm going to move on to the Merit and Excellence videos. Keep an eye out for them. I hope they're handy.